can the calf kicks come out early from Pereira? We know they will, but how many, the volume, how much will it limited Hill's possibly already limited speed. So I think Hill gets the KO. I, I, mean, I think it's a great main event. I'm pumped. Yeah. Ah, he's going with Hill. Toby's going with a the lot dogs of dogs. The dogs are barking. Yes, <laughs> yes. But, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so you've got, obviously, Alex Pereira, but who is – I tried to say I tried to overcompensate for that time. But <laughs> it, it worked. Weird. You can roll your R's or you can say but, the uh, R's. You just can't use an H. There you go. But um, <laughs> Alex Pereira is one of the best strikers that I think we've ever seen in the UFC. Sorry, I was taking some sweet dreams right there because I got Jamal Hill. <laughs> we are live back with you guys on the MMA group chat. Uh, this is going to be a quick short for you guys. So we're going to re- do a really quick recap of Allen versus Curtis. Uh, so let's hop right into it. Is that the fight of the year? Just give your quick reaction, instant reaction right off the bat. Was that the best fight we've seen in 2024 so far? I would say so far it is. I would say it's definitely a toss-up between that and Strickland versus Duplessis. It was really close for me, but I think that fight had more entertaining moments, and I I, th- I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you guys on that one. That I think it's the best fight of the year so far. It's honestly – now, I haven't been watching UFC for as long as you guys have, but that's honestly one of the best fights I've ever seen in my entire life. It was absolutely insane, and I really didn't know who was going to get their hand raised at the end of it either. Yeah, it was crazy. I think it really did come down. Well, I guess we know now that it did. It came down to the last twenty seconds. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the judges. I think two of the judges had it two two on the scorecards going into that last round. And I think if Allen, if uh, Curtis hadn't buckled over in pain in those last twenty seconds, we could have seen some really wild scorecards. I think it was really impressive the way they just kind of. I think they're one of those matchups that are perfect stylistically for one another. Um, I, I don't know. What do, what do you guys come away with thinking about what's next for Allen and Curtis? Because, you know, we talk about how it's fight of the year so far, and I would have a hard time disagreeing. But part of what makes a fight a fight of the year is that there's some sloppiness to it. <clears throat> there's some – there's things where guys leave openings for the others to naturally find um, on both sides of it. With Allen, I came away with – more concerns I think about how far he can actually go uh, Curtis is a not a threat at all in the ground uh, he's only a threat on the feet and he still gave Allen five rounds of hell what where, where does Allen go from here seeing that he's got a lot of weaknesses against a guy who can be sharper mm-hmm. on the feet I mean I feel like you can look at it one of two ways I look at it in the sense that he knew he was going to beat Curtis he tried to you know use every aspect of his game against him, also a revenge fight. But you could also look like it, at like what you were saying with concerns. He didn't go to the ground much. He got Curtis down basically at will, someone with great takedown defense. I don't know. I, I think it is a little concerning for Allen, though, just because, you know, I think he should have just gone to the ground and dominated. It might not have been the main event people want to see, but it's his easiest way to victory. And I don't know, it was just an interesting strategy from him. Yeah, I don't think he took him to the ground at will, though. I'd have to disagree on that point because he tried in the fourth and fifth round to constantly take him down, and he started failing miserably. I mean, if it wasn't for the knee at the end of the fifth round, Allen probably is 0-2 to Chris Curtis. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it kind of gives me pause when I think about putting him against a true top five contender because it's like there are going to be guys who don't fade, who don't tear their hamstring. <clears throat> and who are going to come at him with constant pressure. I mean, if you put him against Strickland, I mean, the pressure, I don't know if he could take a pressure like that for five rounds. We, we already know he couldn't take it for three rounds. Um, and even more so, I mean, Duplessis, uh, he's an even tougher matchup than Strickland or Curtis, I'd argue. Uh, so it does give me some concern, but I think, I think they have to rebook the Vittori fight. It would show me that he can take a guy who's both sharp on the feet and adequate on the ground, um, and that would give me <clears throat> that would give me peace about sending him forward. Um, you know, where this one kind of gives me a lot of concern. But I don't know what you guys think about them rebooking that. It seems like the rest of the division's pretty much booked up, so I don't. Yeah, I don't really see a lot, of, whole lot of other options if he wants to get back in there within the next six months. Yeah, the middleweight division's madness right now. Literally everything is booked up. So I definitely think at this point they're going to need to do Allen, um, um, Allen versus Vittori. So I also agree, though. I, I don't think it was Allen's best performance. Uh, but at the same time, I was very unimpressed with Allen. 
Um, I kind of expected him to kind of go out and get his revenge on Chris Curtis. But, again, you could very well make the argument Chris Curtis won that fight. I personally did have Brendan Allen. But, I mean, again, if somebody would have told me they 100% believed Chris Curtis won that fight, I couldn't have told them that they were wrong. So, again, not a great performance from Allen in my eyes, but it was an awesome fight. And I definitely think that Vittori would make a lot of sense. And, I mean, at this point, he's one, maybe two wins away from a title shot. So Yeah. Um, and I guess with Curtis, it's probably too soon to tell. But he's... He's probably going to be sidelined quite a bit with the hamstring tear, so it'll be interesting to see kind of who he gets matched up with next. The injury might not be the worst thing for him in in so far as he could probably get a a loser of one of these big fights. Uh, what I would like to see is, well, I, not that I'd like to see someone lose, but I'd like to see Cannonier go out and beat Imavov in June, and then Imavov versus Curtis get the rematch since their last fight ended in a no contest, and I think there's real bad blood there. Uh, that was evidenced especially when Imavov and him started arguing during Imavov's fight with Roman Delice. Uh I think they both hate each other. If Imavov loses and Curtis is somehow healthy near the fall, maybe in time for... They announced uh, tonight at the UFC press conference that October 26th is the Abu Dhabi Fight Island card. Um, so maybe maybe we get that as like a feature bout on the on the pay per view if Curtis can heal up fast enough. Uh, I don't know, but I guess I guess time will tell. As far as the rest of the card goes, what did you guys think? Were there any notable moments, notable storylines you guys wanted to kind of dig into? I feel like we've kind of fleshed out that main event pretty much to its extent, given the injury and given. Now that we know Curtis fought four rounds with a torn hamstring, no, yeah. uh, that, that Allen's performance is even less impressive. Well, I did want to add, before we move on to that, I did want to add that I'm not even sure Al, or, uh, Curtis is going to stay in middleweight because it was rumored before the fight that he was ready to move weight divisions. I assume that means down. I didn't see up or down. I assume that means down because he'd be a really, really small light heavyweight. So I'm not even positive that he would come back to middleweight, but I guess, it's, again, it could be a really long time before we even see him fight again at all, so yeah. I guess we'll see. No, I want to add one more thing, too. I would say the biggest concern for me coming out of that fight is, I, while I wasn't impressed with it, it wasn't, like, as shocking as Curtis defending the submission attempts when Allen had the back, but there were three or four times that fight, Curtis, who was knocking on the ground, switched and took top control after Allen had the back, and if that's the thing Allen's best at, looking at him, like, moving up, looking for a title that did not look good to me well and it could be the case where you know each fighter has that one guy who's their kryptonite the one guy who's always going to give them a tough fight and then if you put them in against a guy in another matchup who they're not as familiar with they can come out and implement the game plan and not think about it you know it's it'd be you could convince me that Allen had in the back of his mind what occurred in the last fight getting afraid of being starched on the feet made him more hesitant in other areas of his game. And I was impressed with the fact that this time he took the shots. It showed me that the last time that he was knocked out, that it wasn't his durability that was the problem. It was more his effort and his cardio. And it seems like he's improved in those areas. And you have to you have to give him credit for a seven-fight win streak. Um, but there are still some areas of concern. But I think a win over Vittori could make him clearly assert I'm next, or I'm next for a true number one contender fight. Uh, but with that, what about the rest of the card? Any notable moments? Anything you guys want to flesh out as far as what happened on the re- with the rest of the bouts? I'll just say, before we get into fights themselves, I'm just going to say that judging was weird. It's like top to bottom. There was one judge that gave Curtis, was it 49 40? The was one judge 49, gave Allen 49 46. One judge gave Allen. Um, and then, I mean, there was just weird. Uh, judge moments throughout the entire card. I think the co-main had one go 30-27. Yeah, whoever whoever yeah. gave Alexander Hernandez 30-27 should be fired, should never be allowed to judge again. Uh, I was honestly shocked that they gave Chepe the fight. I picked Chepe. I think each of us went like four out of five on our main card picks for last week, so I wasn't totally mad about the, the way it ended, but I don't know. I thought one, yeah, that was, that one was, guy was, looked battered and one guy didn't, and the guy who was battered won the fight <laughs> i kind of agree again i, I thought i thought chepe was going to be the better fighter in there but after watching i don't think he was it was a great fight and I, again it could have gone either way so i'm not mad at how they score it because i think it was split decision so I, I can respect that but again i didn't think he won the fight either so yeah i i i kind of felt like it was clear two to one i just don't know how you give round three to chepe i'm glad he won i mean i'm a fan but i wouldn't say cherry a looked clearly better he did look really good they both look really good i think they're both gonna be really good for a while but 
Yeah, the judging for another consecutive week going into UFC 300 is looking very sketchy. Yeah, I agree. I do think both of them are going to be contenders for quite a while. Um, and there, you know, the rest of the card, it was a lot of a lot of people building up, kind of making moves. I think Norma Demont moved up more in the women's division. I don't know if that was more impressive for Dumont side of things or just a fact that Durand me is still not making the improvements that she needed to make years ago as far as the ground game goes. Uh, that There was the heavyweight scrap, Dresky versus Walker, which was dreadful. Was that was a dreadful After fight. Toby had hyped that fight. That was so a much. dreadful fight. Uh, the one fight that really impressed me was Charlie Campbell versus Trevor Peak. Uh, Trevor Peak's, you know, techniques didn't impress me whatsoever, but his heart, <laughs> his heart did, and Charlie Campbell kind of proved to me that he's for real. He's a dog well how about um, bob mondays too he really ooh, showed up i mean we knew he was gonna be good dude. but he came out and he, he even surprised me he looked that awesome. kick that's the second time he's done that with the kick the spinning kick to knock somebody out i mean oh my gosh his striking is scary um and if he i mean if he can just keep piecing things together and maybe the ludovic klein fight um, where he really struggled with the takedowns was kind of the wake-up he needed to make sure that part of his game was shored up. Uh, I mean, the way his striking looked, it looked like he can contend with anybody on the feet. I am I mean, I'd be terrified to take him on, and he's going to be knocking on the door of the top 15 really soon. And uh, I'm more inclined now to think that that Ludovic Klein fight was just... Just a fight that shows that Ludovic Klein is on another level. I mean, you even saw that. I think he fought AJ Campbell um, back in February uh, or March on the Rosenstrike versus Kaziv card. I mean, you saw Klein is on a, just a different level of striking right now. So maybe it's just the fact that he ran up into a guy who's more in the prime of his career. I think Ignacio Batamondes is going to be a monster for years. Well, the crazy thing, too, and the awesome thing to look at was, obviously with punches, you can place them like wherever you want to. Before he got the head kick, that spinning body kick, that was what really hurt him, too. So if he can if he can aim that well with his feet, too, he's going to be dangerous. He's, he's, he's a monster. Um, that, yeah, that's that's pretty much sums up the card. Yeah. It was a... It was, uh, there was uh, the one the one other fight I did want to mention was Caesar Almeida. He's here, and let's not discount. You never want to overplay it, but let's not discount the fact that this guy has beaten Alex Pereira in kickboxing. So you know they're gonna play that up if he can get a cut. And he just got matched up. Uh, it's Roman Copylov versus Caesar Almeida, Ooh, June first in Newark, That's New a Jersey. Really good That's a phenomenal fight. Uh, we'll see if I mean we saw Caesar. The one thing that we were all thinking, and I, I'm not sure if any of us picked Budka, but the reason you would have went with Budka is because you thought, okay, if he gets him to the ground, Almeida's not getting up. And Almeida proved uh, he's he's he proved that he hasn't improved his takedown defense, but he can get up. And if he gets up, he's going to put a beating on you. And if his striking is pinpoint at any point in the fight. Uh, so that really impressed me. Uh, but other than that, I think that's kind of a good... Good wrap on the card and yeah and hey if you guys are interested too and listen we'll have our we'll have our full UFC 300 podcast out so if you're interested in hearing about UFC 300 go check that out we want to do this little short video because we didn't want to ruin our UFC 300 podcast but um, <laughs> you can find all of our parlay picks and stuff that we did last week we're gonna recap that in our 300 episode but yeah go check that out if you have time and yeah let's do it on cool. to 300 yes sir.